Hi hey everyone, today uh, I'm going to show you how to connect DVD Core into Orchestra. Uh, this is pretty cool. Um, obviously, if you're running something like DVD Core, it's just pushing queries down to your warehouse or lake house, and therefore the right place for it to be is obviously within within the orchestrator. Um, something we're focusing on is helping like data engineers and analytics engineers who want a deployment environment for DVD Core as opposed to a development environment. Um, you know, we use uh, DBT Core uh, and we develop locally. So this will work really well if you're happy in VS Code or another code editor, but you don't want to maintain the infrastructure for actually running um, your pipelines when they're in production. So all you have to do is head over to Integrations, New Connection, DBT Core, uh, give it a name. What Orchestra will do is connect to GitHub and uh, you know we also support Bitbucket and we will we will support GitLab. Um, if you're on something like an enterprise version, uh, you should put in a self-hosted URL. Uh, the repository will be the name of your repo. So for us, it would be something like this. Uh, you should then get a token. Um, I'll include links to the docs. I won't bore you with the permissions, but you know, let's just put in some uh, some dummy values here. And then you'll need to add your profiles.yaml file. Now this will vary uh, depending on depending on what you're doing. Um, so in this case, I've got a couple of example profiles. Um, we use a bit of bit of BigQuery, a bit of Snowflake, but again, you could you could have any number of profiles here. Obviously, if the method you're using is something like OAuth uh, and you're doing that locally, that's not going to work. So what I recommend you do is create like a demo profiles.yaml in your .dpt folder, uh, copy what you've got, and then just use this to edit your profiles.yaml. And uh, yeah, the, you know, obviously like there are a few methods here that won't work. So in BigQuery, uh, service account uh, or like key file path, like that's not gonna work because there's not gonna be a path for the key file JSON. Uh, you'll have to just go ahead and get the key file JSON and put it in. By and large, the most common thing for Snowflake is um, to sort of have a user uh, with a password, database, warehouse role, etc. And again, um, if you're doing like Snowflake SSO locally, uh, if you just drag and drop that profiles.yaml, that's not that's not going to work um, because because we don't have the sort of OAuth SSO context that you might have locally. Um, but yeah, you can see here there are just a couple of uh, dummy values. The most important one, I guess, for, for BigQuery is, is to remember that you need to include all this big in and private key stuff. So that's building the profiles.yaml. Uh, what we're then going to do is I'm just going to grab this and drop it over here. And then you're good to go. And this will obviously fail because the Git token doesn't work. But if I Show you one I made earlier. That's pretty cool. A good thing to do if this isn't working is to check that you can actually get the repo uh, with the token that you've got. Um, sometimes there are some connection errors depending on what the sort of like Git settings that your security team will have, um, and you can you can sort of validate that in Postman. Cool. So now we've got our uh, connection we can basically crack on. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new pipeline. Let's call this DPT call. And we can add some tasks. So the benefit of having a sort of DBT core operator in Orchestra is that you can use it to execute different, um, different jobs and monitor different jobs that are sort of either side of it. So if we start with our, um, you know, let's call it our bronze transformations, it's really straightforward. Um, you can just do something like this. Maybe if you want to have a seed in there, separate things with a new line and semicolon. Uh, it's pretty cool because you can gather like additional metadata. So if you want to look at query cost by um, operation, by test, you can add in a connection. And then by default, we'll use the core connection that we created earlier. But again, if you wanted to have different 
um, connections that different people have access to, then this is a this is a good way to segregate that. So you can sort of have different connections. Um, it's fairly flexible. You can sort of ping a different branch, project directory, and uh, yeah, depending on what warehouse um, like DBT is using uh, for us to sort of correlate that metadata, you can also tell us. So something like this, for example. Cool, and that's really it. Um, something you could do is sort of chain these together. So this would be your silver layer. And then if you wanted to put some data loading jobs before, something like a five trend for your SAS ingestion, you can do that. And maybe you also want to wait for some, I don't know, some Azure data copying with data factory. You can do that too. Maybe there's a separate task that you want to run where you know you're doing stuff in a in a VM. Um, I just put in some dummy values here. It's really really easy. Something like that. I always forget the syntax. And then the cool thing is, if there are other things that sort of depend on this uh, DBT job, you can put those here. So obviously, you know, we're spending a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of resources, making sure that we can have really nice, clean data in our warehouse. It's going to be pretty embarrassing to our end stakeholders if we end up, you know, firing data into a database that uh, an external customer sees, or maybe into like a CRM, like Salesforce with you know just incorrect data uh, that's going to be that's going to be really embarrassing and bad it's sort of a bit like with uh, food delivery right it's like spend all this time and effort with moving food around cooking it delivering it and then how frustrating is it if at the very end you know the rider just you know crushes all the food um, it's just very very wasteful uh, and again you can sort of refresh some stuff in Power BI as well if you wanted and indeed, any dashboarding tool. So hopefully you can see from that how easy it is to connect dbt to the rest of your stack. Um, you know, another another big problem that folks have is they don't get like nice alerts. Um, so in this case, we can uh, set up an alert here and I'm just going to send it to my email. but. What Orchestra does is we pass the artifacts from dbt first, so you don't have to build another pipeline to do that. So that's another job saved. And then the alerts we send also have like test level detail, uh, model level detail. So it's not just like, hey, this dbt job failed. Um, you get you get all the data. And you know the advantage to putting it in something like this is that you can sort of alert stakeholders. And again, this is this is sort of helping build trust and also sort of like minimize some of the triage and ticketing, right? So what we're doing here is we're going to say, okay, send me an alert if this task, this refreshing dashboard goes into a cancelled or a skip state. It's going to do that if, uh, you know, anything upstream fails. And you can say, you know, hey, stakeholder, um, you think the data in the dashboard might be a bit, uh, could be stale. You say, we're looking into it and we'll update you. ASAP. And you know, that could go to Slack. You know, basically, wherever your end stakeholders like to get their alerts. So now we can save this. And then we can go ahead and run it. And this is what happens when you run a DBT model. And this is just our internal one. So it's pretty cool because you sort of click on the alert and you get taken straight to this. And we can see 
quite a lot of cool data. We can see the number of rows affected. Um, we should also have bytes for BigQuery, which is pretty cool. And I can see, you know, I've I've I, I've screwed up. I've screwed up one of my one of my uh, data points. So somebody's somebody's not put the number of uh, months that one of our deals is for. And then we've also got a little warning for some of our some of our contacts. Um, so it looks like we've got some duplicates there. And as a result, our dashboarding tool has not been refreshed. Um, so you know we immediately have visibility of all the failures, which is quite nice. Um, what you can do is go ahead and fix this, and then when you're done, come back to Orchestra and you can rerun from failed. Okay, so we've retried this from the point of failure. Let's go ahead and explore the lineage. We've got some new metadata, so let's reload that. Nice. And we can see that we haven't executed the whole DAG, which is great. We've just executed the failing test from before. And yeah, you can configure the other one to run as well, but it was in a warning. So by default, we don't rerun warnings. But yeah, it's pretty nice to just be able to like hit rerun from failed because then, um, you know, you don't have to sort of go back and manually manually trigger everything. So hopefully uh, another nice time saving there. The final thing to note is our analytics. So if we take a look at, um, at our analytics, we can see that the data quality score, the Snowflake cost, the BigQuery cost um, is all going to be in there. You're going to get that even if you're just using Orchestra to run dbt core, which is really, really cool. Um, and then if you sort of want to dive into a specific product, so this is uh, this is my dbt one, we can kind of get into the nitty gritty of what's, what's going on. So you have all of the sort of dbt operations here. Um, which is which is pretty pretty sweet. If you wanted to sort of click into this and say, okay, well, why are my things taking so long? You can just click on it. You get a little filter here. You can say, ah, oh, okay, it's not actually DBT. It's, it's five pounds starting again. And then we've also got this brand new data assets panel. So this is essentially the same data but grouped at the table level. And if we just take a look at like some of the medium stats we've got, you can kind of see that all of those like operations that are dbt core operations that are updating or testing this data in BigQuery come in to this to this view. And it's pretty cool because you can see how much people are using this table, you know, how much it's costing us to keep it going. You can see what the data quality is like. So this is this is we're smashing it here. We can see the ratio of like you know materializations to tests. Um, and yeah, you just have like basically all the data. So that is DBT call. Um, let me know what you guys think and I'll drop some helpful resources if you want to get started or have any more questions in the comments.